Hi, Brock Bone here, I'm back with another video. Today we're going to do Kerberos relaying. So Kerberos relaying is an interesting technique that will allow us to escalate privileges on a system. So for example, on our example system I'm showing here, I am logged in as a regular user. So you can imagine I've gotten a foothold somehow on the system and I'm a regular user, but I want to escalate up to system on this machine then I basically have full control over it. So Kerberos really in kind of an interesting way of doing that. Now, it requires you to be able to create a machine account in the Active Directory to do this escalation. Because the way it works is you're creating a machine account, you are then stealing the SID of that machine account, then you are requesting a ticket as the administrator of that system, loading it onto your system, and then escalating with that up to NT authority system on your local computer. So very confusing. Uh, read up on it if you have any questions, but we're going to demonstrate Kerberos relaying. So before we start, we kind of mentioned the uh, you need the ability to add a computer to the Active Directory. So if we take a look at our domain controller over here, uh, by default, you have the ability as a regular user to add up to 10 computer accounts to Active Directory. I thoroughly recommend you change this because if you don't, these types of attacks, which there are multiple, can be used against you. There are two ways to do it. You can do a group policy and you can do it by changing the MSDS machine account quota. So this right here, MSDS machine account quota. You can change that from 10 to zero. So if I run this query here with PowerShell on my domain controller, you can run it anywhere that you have the domain tools. Make sure it runs. Notice it gives us a 10. So by default, I have the ability to add up to 10 computers as an unprivileged user. You don't want that. So change that. Either do it with a group policy or change this to a zero. If you change this to a zero, you then need to pre-populate computers in your Active Directory when they're joining. So that means an administrator needs to come in, right click here, new, and create a computer account for all the computers that are gonna join. All you do is create a computer account with a matching host name and you're good to go. All right, so let's go back over here to our Win 10 host and we're gonna escalate. So we are logged in as Clint Barton here. Clint has no permissions, as I said. So let's take a look at him just to make sure I am logged in as Clint and if I do net, user Clint Barton and I do slash domain. You can see he basically is a domain user. He has no elevated privilege whatsoever. So that means that he's a base user. So we're going to escalate him to NT authority system. So we're going to use an application called curb relay up curb relay up. It takes the multiple steps required to make this attack work and puts them into one application. So before you had to use all of these different applications, including Rubius, to get this escalation to work. You would start by adding the computer account, you would use active, or you would use PowerShell to go query the SID out, use the SID in Curb, Curb Relay, then you would pull that into the system using Rubius, and then you would be able to escalate by using a UAC bypass. Very, very complex to do. It also isn't very reliable of an attack where Curb Relay Up, the application we're showing, works flawlessly, basically every time. So let's go ahead and we will demo this. So we're gonna create a computer account using Curb Relay Up here. And we're in PowerShell, so we're just gonna paste this in. And we're running Curb Relay Up, Relay, Domain. This is our local domain. Create new computer account. We're gonna create the com computer name of Evil Corp. And you have to add a dollar because, well, it's a computer account. And then computer password is evil123. So we're going to go ahead and run this now. And notice it has run. So we created the computer account evil corp. It added it with that password. It registered the comm server, forced system authentication, got Kerberos auth from NT system, relayed it to LDAP. So it did all those functions that I was talking about that you would have to do manually right here. So now all we need to do is spawn a session. So we'll take this, copy this in, and 
there we go. We now have a session, a session. And if I do, who am I? It says we are NT authority system. So I have fully escalated from nothing all the way to system that simply with one application. Now, Defender is off in this demo and most of the AV products are catching this. That doesn't matter. You can slip by AV in many different ways. And we can illustrate that in the later videos. But if you can slip this application by AV and run it in an environment where you can create a computer account, you can escalate the system quite easily. Now, one of the things that this does is it creates a very specific event in Event Viewer, which that's going to allow us to create a sim rule based on this. We'll do that here in our Elastic Sim. But if we open up Event Viewer, and we go into our Windows logs and security, a very common event to detect this is successful authentication log, 4624. Now, this is gonna take a minute because I've got 20,000 logs on the system. I kind of overlog these because they're in my lab. <clears throat> but once it populates, we should be able to show this. Also have this logging to my Elastic Sim. I'm using Elastic because it's open source. I was able to easily spin it up in Docker containers and get it going quickly. So it's very helpful to have kind of a Sim in your lab just to catch these things so you know how to build the rules out, especially if it's a platform that you are doing detection engineering for. But Elastic's, the rule base and the KQL and the uh, Lucene query language have become basically standards across the in industry in a lot of cases. So it's quite easy to port it out. Also, you can use uncoder.io to take your query and convert it into Sigma rules. So we can illustrate that as well. But we'll filter our current log here. We're gonna filter on 4624. And if we look closely here, we're gonna have a very weird looking 4624 event. So if we take a look, we have a 4624 event with a source network address of 127.0.0.1. So that is very odd. Why would a host authenticate to itself on Kerberos with this user? And the, another weird thing to notice, it's a logon type three, which is a network login, but it's also under the account administrator. It's not under Clint Barton that we just create, we were running the attack from Clint Barton. It is using the Kerberos relaying of the administrator account of another system to do this. So it ups it into administrator and then ups it into system. So you'll always have the account name of administrator in most cases, but the trigger is gonna be this 127.0.1 on Kerberos on the event code of 4624. That's the easiest way to detect this. Now there are a couple other ways you can use. If we uh, go into the system log and we search for 7045 here, it also installs a service. So if you have service logging turned on in your SIM, you can detect a service being installed. Now the attacker can change the service name though. By default, it installs curb SCM, but they can make this look like anything they want. So it's easy for them to blend in. So I would say the better detection engineering on this is on event ID 4624 and using 4624 for that detection. So let's take a look in Elastic now. We've got this feeding into our Elastic SIM. And if we go event code 4624, and we'll go ahead and update our query, we're gonna have if we caught it just right, we will be able to grab the event here. We've got some other authentication events here first in the chain. But what we are looking for, this is typical detection engineering finding. You start with a high level query and you work your way in but I can cut through it if it takes me too long here to find this event. Let's just start with this. We'll do 127.0.0.1. I'll just do a simple and here. 
and it should actually find it because Elastic is smart like that. It's going to be able to find this for us. And notice we our normal query would be when event data IP address. And also if I throw this up into the table, you can see here how many times I've run this attack. Uh, but it does meet what we were trying to meet with our detection engineering of finding this. But just to make your rules better, you want to do win log event data IP address. I'm going to copy that out. So you're doing event code. You're then doing your IP address. We want to build this rule right. It should be in quotes. And then we also want to do some things just to make sure we're not getting false positives because you can occasionally get false positives. We want to make sure the logon process name is Kerberos because this is a Kerberos authentication. It's not another form of authentication. So now we'll just do this. We'll do Kerberos. And we will refresh our query, and it shouldn't change. And you can go further. You can do the logon type as well, a type 3, because it will basically always be a type 3. So then, and 3. And when we update, it's not going to change. So this is our query. This will detect this basically every time you start with event code 4624, successful login. You look for win log event data IP address 127.0.0.1, and then win log event data logon process name, Kerberos, and win log event data logon type 3. So in any system that uses Elastic or ECS as its base, this query will work. So now we're going to take this query and we're going to turn it into a rule. So we can come over here. We'll go into security. We're going to go into rules, create new rule, custom query. We'll throw our custom query in here. You can change this between KQL and Lucene. I typically stick with KQL if it's elastic, Lucene if it's something with open search, but it's basically the same. It's not much different, it's just a few little difference on the Booleans and the grouping and things like that. Timeline template, you can have it match a specific timeline template if you want it to. It really isn't that hard. We're going to look for the last hour for our preview. So if we go to preview, we'll see some hits here. Notice we got two here. So we know that's working. You can preview results just to make sure it's good. We're going to go ahead and continue that. And we'll give the name a rule. We'll call it Kerberos. Relaying. Relaying of Kerberos for privilege escalation. Probably don't need that capital P there, essentially, for privilege escalation, right? Just simple description. Probably would be a high. This one would be one that you would want to put as high. You can select a risk score here. We're going to do like 75, it's pretty high, right? And if you do tagging on your rules, you put any tags here that you would want for your query. We'll go ahead and continue here. We want this to run at the smallest amount that it can run. Typically around five minutes is fine. <clears throat> if you give it an additional look back of one minute, that's fine too. So that just means it's going to look back past that timeline. So five minutes happens, so it's going to look back another minute just to do that gap timeline. And then we'll continue here. And then the action. On each rule execution, you can have it perform an action, hourly, daily, weekly, so on and so forth. So we're going to go ahead and create and activate our rule. And if you're really picky, you can come in and take out the index patterns that don't match. In our case, we only need win log beat for this particular rule. I'm picky just because this is a lab and I don't want this set of Docker containers to get overrun. So it doesn't need to look through all the indexes. It just needs to look through win log beat. So we'll go ahead and save the changes now. And we will activate the rule. And then once we run this attack again, it will actually detect it. So the good thing here is because I already ran this, all I need to do is spawn the session again. 
and it will create that event. So we're going to go ahead and spawn the session again. And actually to make this work the right way, we're going to need our rule to be a little quicker than five minutes. I usually set five minutes on the default because that's just easier. But in this case, we will need it to be a little bit sooner than that. Schedule. We're going to need this to run every one minute. So we'll set it to one minute just for the demo purposes. I don't recommend doing that in your normal environment. But now if I run this again, it's going to create another session for me. And then in just a minute here, we should have an alert from Elastic. So we'll give it a second here. And I'll go ahead and refresh now just to make sure that it hasn't detected. If it hasn't detected now, I'll pause the video and we can wait till the detection comes up and I'll restart it. All right, I'm going to go ahead and pause and our rule finally triggered. So we can see that we have an alert here in Elastic now showing our Kerberos relaying with a severity of high, the event where it was created and all of the information that our query created. So if we click view details now, it'll tell us exactly where this happened. It happened on host 2 win 10 in our lab. So that's the detection engineering for this particular threat. So this works no matter what method they use. Uh, this odd 4624 event is a good tell. It's a good rule. It's probably not going to be in many sims by default. There are some Sigma rules out there that people have already created for this. I would recommend making those a little tighter in your environment. If you're going to build them, build it a little tighter like I did there, adding Kerberos, adding the logon type, adding that information, and you should be good to go. And that's it for this video. Thank you very much.